One method that we can use to look at the structure of the community within the soil is phospholipid fatty acids, or PLFAs. Phospholipid fatty acids extract the phospholipids from each of the members of the community. This gives us a signature, so each member has a corresponding signature that, of phospholipids. So we can now elucidate the bacteria, both gram-positive and gram-negative, the fungi, and the actinomycetes. We often use phospholipid fatty acids to profile the community as well as to look at the carbon flow within the ecosystem. The phospholipid fatty acid procedure, or PLFAs, is quite a long, laborious procedure. It takes multi-days, about four days in the lab, and then preparation beforehand. The soil comes back from the field and can be quite wet, depending on the moisture content at the site. This moisture needs to be removed from the, the soil before we can start the procedure. So what we do is put a little subsample of the soil into the freeze dryer for a few days, depending on the, wet the wetness. This removes all of the moisture, leaving us with just the soil particles. I begin the process by weighing out the soil into Teflon tubes. These Teflon tubes are safe for, with solvents, which will be used quite frequently throughout the procedure. Once the soil is weighed, various solvents, including chloroform, methanol, as well as citrate buffer, are added to the soil. This lyses the cells and extracts the phospholipids from the cells within the soil. The soil is then put on to a shaker and spun on a centrifuge afterwards. And we then are left with the supernatant, or basically the liquid inside the tube, excluding the soil. From here, I add more chloroform and citrate buffer, and I let the sample sit overnight. This procedure, the first day, takes about five or six hours for 24 samples. After sitting overnight, we will see that we have two layers. The first layer on the bottom contains the solvent with all of the lipids. The second layer is the aqueous layer. We need to remove this aqueous layer before we continue with the procedure. Phospholipid fatty acids cannot come into contact with, with the aqueous layer or oxygen. They also do not like, like light, so this procedure needs to be done in a fume hood in the dark. On that second day, what I do is I aspirate this top layer, removing all of the aqueous layer. This needs to be fully removed so that we can continue with an oxygen-free sample. That sample is then dried down using nitrogen gas. This forms a film on the bottom of the tube. So this contains our lipids as well as the residues of the solvents that were used to extract the lipids. Day two takes about three hours for 24 samples. From here, the sample is reconstituted in chloroform, then dripped through a silica column. The silica column separates the various types of lipids within my sample. So we're getting the neutral lipids and the waxes, as well as the glycolipids, and then ending with the phospholipids. This is done by the addition of a series of solvents containing chloroform, acetone, and methanol. At the end of day three, which is about a four hour procedure, we are left again with the film at the bottom of the tube after drying down with nitrogen gas. This is then reconstituted again with various solvents, and it's transesterified. Here on day four, we have a five-hour day for 24 samples, and then they end up in a smaller eight mil vial. This smaller eight mil vial will contain the sample that we want. Again, it gets dried down under nitrogen gas. 
When the samples are ready to be run on the GC vial, hexane is added to the smaller 8 mil vial and the sample, which is hexane and the phospholipids, are put into these small GC vials which can then be put through the machine and the phospholipids can be seen. What the G GC gives us is a chromatogram containing the various peaks within the sample and each of these peaks corresponds to the signature of the microbial community.